Good evening, everybody. This is uh, Charlie Dobbins of Multifamily Investing Academy and Dobbins Law. I'd like to welcome you here to this uh, free webinar that we try to do uh, every two weeks uh, for the uh, anyone interested in our different to topics of multifamily acquisitions. Um, if you have an idea, if you want us to cover something, uh, just let us know. This is um, Obviously, this particular webinar is going to be on uh, building a multifamily credibility, credit, credibility package, and um, uh, that's uh, this particular topic happened to come about because uh, one of my uh, students had asked me about it, uh, whether uh, it was now was the right time that she should put together a credibility package, and uh, I told her based upon where she was in the, in the process that she would be wasting her time. Not that she's not qualified, not that she's not going to do the deal. It just takes time to uh, put this thing together, and at this particular junction, it was it wouldn't have been necessary for her to do so. So um, that is why uh, I, you know, we talked a little bit more about what it entailed and what. Uh, you would find in there and when you would use it. Uh, so I decided that would be a great topic for one of our webinars. So, uh, but in addition, um, what I wanted to uh, g give you a little bit of ground rules. This is probably going to be about 20 minutes to so half an hour. These are not long webinars. Uh, we just uh, talk. I don't take any questions. If you have any questions, you can always email me at charles at dobbinslaw.com and Dobbins is D-O-B-E-N-S law.com uh, and that way um, I will be more than happy to, to respond back to you and see if I can answer your question. Uh, just so you know, I on the uh, multifamilyinvestingacademy.com webpage, uh, I have the events page and I uh, you can see where I'm going to be speaking next. Um, as a matter of fact, I have to put up there that I'm going to be in the uh, Baltimore area uh, on February 6th and 7th, I'll be attending, uh, I'll be actually be speaking at a, a, a noteworthy, um, no, it's not noteworthy, I can't, uh, it's Scott, uh, Scott Carson's event uh, out there, and then I'll be going back to Baltimore the end of February. Um, and the next webinar in two weeks will be on the rules of thumb on multifamily property financials. I, I get this question asked to me a lot uh, in my seminars. Uh, we're going to be talking about the rules of thumb for the expense ratios and also the rules of thumb for different types of expenses and what you, you should expect. Um, kind of helps you analyze a deal. I was working with a student over the weekend uh, who, was, who had a, um, a real turnaround opportunity um, out there and uh, you know he it had uh, fully vacant 12 unit vacant property and he needed to, to come up with just a uh, back of the napkin type of analysis and we were able to use the rules of thumb to come up with a, a price that, that turned out to be pretty pretty right on what the property had originally sold for several years back uh, so we knew that our numbers were, were pretty accurate and you need to get to that particular level as well when you start um, uh, analyzing deals. So uh, what is involved in, in putting together uh, a credibility package? Well, the first thing you've got to understand is who is it going to be for? There are different audiences that you have to present your credibility package to. Uh, I'm going to tell you what you should have in a credibility package in a moment, but before we get into that, let's talk about the different audiences that there are uh, in the process for, for turning this over. The first one, the first time you may ever get asked for a pro credibility package is from a broker. Now, he may not want the full-blown uh, dossier. He may just want to see what he calls, what's your real estate resume? And in that particular case, you know, you have to put something together to make him feel like he's done his job uh, for his client, the seller, in vetting you out. Um, if you are, if you don't feel confident in your real estate resume, if you don't feel like you're ready to roll one out, or you don't have one uh, readily available, you know, tell the broker you'll get it to him. You know, if the deal uh, looks like it's going to go further, you'll be more than happy to share with him your resume or your partner's resume. But at this particular juncture, I don't want the whole world knowing that I'm, I'm looking at this particular deal. I hope you understand that, Mr. Broker. You know, st stuff like that. Just kind of dance around the issue. 
You know, you'll hear me say this throughout the course of this discussion, and you'll hear me say you hear me say it in seminars. Multifamily is a hoop jumping business, and this slide right here may be identifying for many of you what that very first hoop is that you have to jump through, that very first hurdle, and that's getting the confidence of the broker to, that you can do deals and, and he will start sending you uh, properties uh, out of his portfolio. So if this is a problem, if the broker steps up and says, hey, I need something more, well, you know, if, if you're one of my clients, we work together, we come up with some type of a solution that, that, uh, that uh, makes the broker feel good. Sometimes what it might be is just me getting on the phone with the broker and my client and, uh, and just talking them through it, letting, letting them know that we know what we're talking about and that we can, uh, we can pull the trigger on a deal if we have to. Uh, so the first time you're going to be asked for any type of a credibility package is from the broker. So, and you, you know, you try to get by with as little as possible for him. Sometimes, in this particular case, it might just be an email. Really, it might just be an email. You might not have to do anything fancy. Um, the next one are the sellers. Now, remember, the sellers uh, are, are represented by the broker. So, the broker is really trying to do the job that the seller uh, wants them to do by getting, you know, to, by vetting you out initially. But sometimes, as a matter of fact, this just happened the other day to one of my clients she had been she had uh, got the broker to approve her as a vetted buyer and the offer we were going back and forth in the purchase and sale agreement and then all of a sudden out of the blue the broker says hey the seller uh, wants to see your uh, credibility package uh, he doesn't he, uh, feel confident he wants to make sure that you're fine and we went right back to the broker's email and said, wait a minute, you just said you were already spoke to the seller about it. And the seller was fine and satisfied with who we were. What's the story here? And so that became a problem. It actually became such a stumbling block that the sell my client, the buyer, said, forget it. You know, uh, you, you said it was all right. You told me in an email everything was fine. Then you come back a week later and say a totally different story. Your property is not that pretty that I want to start working with with a broker that uh, changes his tune every two to uh, every every week. So sometimes you're going to get the request from the seller. You got to have something ready for them. You got to be able to uh, you know tell your story. That's what a credibility package is. It tells your story. A lot of times, guys, y your experience may have nothing to do with multifamily. Well, if that's the case, then you know what? Hey, um, let's. Uh, Let's get that story out there as well and make sure that that story is a, uh, is a good one. Uh, so be prepared for the seller to come back and ask you for something. Now, this is the big one, the lenders. The lenders always want to see your real estate resume. And you can understand why. They want to know what you've done. They want to know who you are. They want to know if you can qualify for a loan or if you can qualify to run a property like this one. Um, a lot of times, in the, the, the resolution to a light credibility package for a lender is to bring in a strong third-party management company. And once you bring in a, a strong third-party management company, then you can uh, uh, solve a lot of problems that the lender is looking for. So just uh, keep that in mind um, when the lender calls on your door. Now, the lender is going to look for a couple of documents. I'm going to talk about those documents in just a moment so you'll be able to see exactly what, what, what it is that they want. But just remember that... Um, this is some, just, when you get to the application phase of the financing, you will need to have a real estate resume or credibility package put together for the lender. Just expect it. If you get approved for the loan, you will have an, an introductory interview over the phone with the lender. And that's another vetting process that they have. It's kind of a, a glad handing uh, type of meeting because they've already approved you, you're, you're getting the loan, they just want to get to know you, you get to know them, they want to know, you know how, how, you, uh, how the two of you are going to work together. But if you get to that point, that means that you've satisfied their, all the requirements, including uh, having a satisfactory real estate resume. Now, think about this, folks. 
you're going to have to go out there, for some, many of you, you're going to have to go out there and raise private money. You've got to put together an investor package that talks about you and why people should invest with you. Now, I know a lot of you might be thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, how can I do this? This is terrible. I, you know, no one's going to believe me. We'll work with you on it. I've got you know, template documents that we used uh, that uh, got us over seven million dollars of uh, multifamily uh, multifamily uh, private money. We, we know these packages will solve your problem. Um, you know, and then any gaps in the resume, we'll figure out what they are and we'll um, we'll make them happen. Now, when you're dealing with the investors. Here's the way you need to think about it. And I just had this conversation with another uh, uh, client uh, this weekend. Did, I did a lot of work this weekend. Uh, you know, we had a snowstorm, so I had to do a lot of work, uh, catch up. So I had a conversation with one of my clients, uh, and they just went on a contract, and the guy was having a bunch of potential investors come over his house. And he started asking me questions. Well, what should I say about this? Well, what should I say about this? Should I ask the investor this? I said, no, you have to understand something. You are... You are the expert. They are looking to invest money with you because you are the expert. They aren't. Don't show up at the table making it look like you don't know what you're doing. That's a recipe for them not wanting to invest with you. You've always got to remain in control of the deal, be the boss in the situation, and command respect. So that's the approach you have to take with your potential investors. And that comes comes out in your credibility package, and that comes out in the offering memorandum. Typically, the, the credibility package is in the offering memorandum. For my clients that uh, we draft the um, the financials, the the SEC documents for, we also provide them with a template for an offering memorandum that helps them put that together so they look look like a million bucks uh, when they're doing the uh, the the uh, transaction when they're looking to raise the money. So keep in mind, you've got to have a credibility package ready to go for the investors. Now, let's talk about what you're going to have in that uh, package. Obviously, what we call a multifamily resume or a real estate resume. If you've done nothing but uh, work on the single family side, don't worry about it. That's a great start. Look at you've done, been successful on the single family side. Now you're looking to switch over to the multifamily side, and you want these people to jump on your bandwagon and take it to the next level. So don't sell yourself short on any real estate experience you've had. Make sure it gets in there. Um, want to know what your experience has been in running a business? This is key, and this is what really gets overlooked. You're not just running a property; you're running a business, and these people are investing in the one of your uh, product lines that is being managed by your business. How good of a business owner are you? Talk about your, your experience uh, running, running companies. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be a, a, a Fortune 500. Anything that knows how to pay its bills on a monthly basis and make money and make a profit, that's what these people want to hear about. Now, there's other thing here called the S SREO, or, or uh, um, Schedule of Real Estate Owned. Uh, it, you're seeing it here on my screen as SREO. You'll hear it from lenders as REO, um, you know, other types of, of an acronyms. Just understand that this is going to be essentially an Excel document that lists all the properties you've ever owned, how much they were for, what the mortgages were, all that type of stuff. The lenders like to see this information, all right? And then finally, your balance sheet. Now, a lot of you might be thinking to yourself, but I don't have a balance sheet. I'm a person. I'm an individual. You know, uh, I don't have all that much. Uh, you know, what the heck uh, am I going to show as far as that goes? I mean, all banks want to see what the uh, what the balance sheets are. And if you don't have a strong one, you got to find somebody to step into your shoes and help you look bigger than you are. All right, and that is where um, you know we talk about the fact: hey, you don't have it. Don't worry about it. I mean, do you honestly believe, and this is, a, I keep saying this in my classes, do you honestly believe that everyone that has ever bought multifamily property had their act together all the time? No. you got to, you know, like they say in those meetings, make it till you fake it. And, you know, that's what you need to do. And, uh, you know, one of my uh, sharks talked about that the other day. He had to make, make, make it till he faked, you know, faked it until he made it. Gee, I think I said that wrong the first time. 
fake it till you make it. Uh, and that's what you might have to do here, and that's fine. But that's just you know what you have to do. Don't let the broker ruin your dream. Don't make you know him him uh, get in your way. If you have deficiencies in your resume, in your credibility package, the easiest way to solve it and the way that you solve it is by getting a sponsor, by finding someone to sponsor you. And finding a sponsor is just another hoop that you have to jump through. And we all had to do it, guys. Don't think that it was any different when I was first getting started. I had to have sponsors uh, for me, uh, putting, uh, uh, helping me put the package together. Just understand it's another hoop that you have to jump through. But keep in mind, and this is what I keep going back through, is I mean, think about it. Do you really want to turn 65 years old where you're, you're living off your Social Security check, you know, you're hoping that check lasts all month long, and the reason why you are in the financial condition you're in is because you thought, of, you thought it was uh, too scary to ask someone to be your sponsor? You thought it was like, oh my gosh, that's such a huge obstacle. I can never overcome that. Therefore, I can never be in the multifamily business, and therefore, I might as well just wait until 65 to collect my check. Don't think that way. Just solve the problem. Figure out what the problem is and solve it. That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what business owners do. That's what successful people do. You understand what the problem is and then you solve it. Now, let me go back here just for a second um, and touch briefly upon sponsorship. Now, for those of you that know me, that you've been to my seminars, you're either in my mentoring program or you're one of my, my legal clients, um, you understand that I, I know all the issues that go on in this business. And I, I anticipate what they are, and I pro project them, and I predict them, and I plan for them. And uh, what my role is as a mentor to a lot of people in my mentoring program uh, is to be the guy who aids, abets, assists, takes them through the entire process, and removes all the hoops that are in the in their way. Now, many of you are, some of you might have seen already my my um, my uh, earnest money deposit program. Because I saw that that for some new investors, they were finding great deals, but they couldn't do anything with them because they didn't even have the earnest money to, to put down. So then I, I put the two parties together, and we came up with the earnest money deposit program. Solved that problem. Great. Now, the next thing is the um, sponsorship. Sponsorship is another hoop. Well, I've been you know sitting down talking with one of my partners, and uh, we've been trying to figure out exactly how can we take remove this hoop for people? And it was really interesting because at about the time we were having this conversation, I got a phone call from one of my uh, one of my clients who is eminently qualified, eminently qual eminently quali qualified uh, to be a sponsor. And he had been approached by somebody, and the guy was looking to get him to be a sponsor. And he was asking me, "What do you think? Uh, what does it entail? How, you know, how can I, I make this thing work?" And then we came to the conclusion that this guy wants people to bring him opportunities, and he will act as a sponsor. And I realized that I have other clients that would also qualify as a sponsor. And so what I'm what we're trying to do right now is to create a program very similar to our earnest money deposit program where we make sponsorship available to new investors as well. So this is in the in the very early stages. It really isn't going to take all that much. We just have to work out some of the parameters because essentially what it is is nothing more than an introduction and helping the two parties come to uh, terms as to how the sponsorship will work. But that's kind of where we are in the uh, uh, in the development of the next hoop removing uh, situation with um, uh, with multifamily investing so that's 
what you can expect from us in the next couple of months is uh, a rollout of our program uh, for sponsorship. So, uh, you know, we, we want to see our clients and our, our mentoring students get into deals. We want to see them get into good deals. We want to help them through the whole entire process every step of the way. Um, and this is what we're, we're always thinking of ways to uh, remove obstacles. I don't think uh, anyone else is, is doing that type of thing. But uh, we are. So um, keep in mind that if you want to find out where I'm speaking, where I will be live and in color, uh, you can always go to the multifamilyinvestingacademy.com forward slash events page uh, for the up-to-the-minute schedule. As I said, uh, Baltimore twice in February. Um, one as a sales pitch, the other one is a um, one is a sales pitch, the other one is a uh, Actually, a teaching event. We're going to do another uh, Shark Tank in uh, Baltimore. The end of Baltimore, end of Mar February in Baltimore, Anaheim in March, and uh, I can't remember where I'm going to be in April, but I'm traveling in April as well. So uh, I've got a lot of things scheduled for the ne next upcoming year. Uh, check it out. Make sure you sign up. Love to meet you. Love to get to know you, and uh, see how I can help you. So hopefully this uh, this was helpful because that's all there is. Um, if you have any questions, remember I said you can uh, contact me at charles at dobbinslaw.com. Um, and uh, if you're thinking about the um, securities documents or the offering memorandum, those, uh, you know, if you uh, sign up with my, uh, my program, we make that available to you as well. Uh, so uh, hopefully this has been helpful. And uh, as always, best of luck to you. Uh, let me know how I can help you. Have a great night, everybody.